Oh my god, I am so tired. I've been out shooting all day today. I was at Mount Sterling Court Day, which is almost like a redneck festival. It's uh, like the largest flea market in the United States. It goes on for like 30 miles between three or four different cities. Mount Sterling's the main one now. They used to have a lot of neat antiques there and stuff, but now it's mostly cheap Chinese crap. That's what really pisses me off, but it's also the world's largest... Actually, it's the... I think it... well... I know in the Democrat... I, mean, I guess you go to Afghanistan where they have gun bazaars or people trading in machine guns and stuff, but... There's a section of downtown Mount Sterling where all these uh, goobers gather and, you know, some of them are packing like nine guns on their chest. I'll post some pictures later. I've been sh out shooting all day today. My feet are killing me, I'm a bit sunburned, I'm tired, my hand is a little crook from holding my Nikon D750 with this lens on it, by the way, the Tamron 70 and the 200 2.8. To me, this is a portrait lens, and I'll tell you why and when it's a portrait lens. This is all about pre-planning your shot. You know, I got nearly 120 lenses, so I gotta know which lens to grab, because I have to think in my brain what sort of shooting I'm gonna be doing, and why this is appropriate for what I was shooting today. I was like, well, it's at 70 to 200, has flat image rendition. Well, yeah, it does. It's incredibly fast autofocus. Why would you consider 70-200 a portrait lens? Or a, a personal lens? And I'll tell you here in a second. But, you know, some of these guys are pushing around little baby carts. The funniest ones are the guys that put these guys with goobers with beards. It's like Hatfield. Sometimes the Hatfield McCoys really do show up there because the Hat... I can't remember if it's the McCoys or the Hatfields. I think it's the Hatfields live in Kentucky. Uh, but sometimes the Hatfields actually... <laughs> do show up at these uh, at the Mount Sterling Court days, which is where I was at today. They'll have like a baby buggy, and there'll be like ten rifles just sitting out, and a couple AR assault weapons, and uh, there'll be guys with all these guns laid out. In this. And this is, they shut down downtown Mount Sterling, and they, they got all these guns laid out for sale. And uh, of course, most of the Mount Sterling uh, Court Day flea market, uh, it's not really a flea market, but it's all open air, is... Uh, not guns, but that part of downtown is. That's the gun section. Uh, it's just you walk around and you got a rifle shoved up your nose here, and a AR-15 shoved up your nose here, and guys have got like uh, six guns on their back and like four pistols shoved down their pants, and it makes for neat portrait photography uh, or uh, a street photography. <laughs> But they're very skittish, you know, they hate media. And when you're packing around a D750 with a vertical grip and this thing with the lens hood, they think, yeah, I have, I was stopped like five or six times. And I'm not worried about I don't care. I'm not in fear of my life. I had the people stop me like five or six times and say, who are you shooting for, boy? And uh, I gave them various answers. Um, most of the time I said, I'm not shooting for anybody. Um, you're in danger of getting shot there when you, especially when you point this lens with the lens hood, it's about yay big at their faces. You got to be quick, and this is one time where it's a <laughs> my life is in danger if I'm not quick on the trigger and I see something that I want to shoot, and I wait for their eyes to turn away. Boom! Click, click, click. You know, turn back. They have no idea what happened. Um, but this is a street lens. It's like you normally think of a 35 millimeters of street lens, but I knew what I'd be shooting today. And this is a street lens, because for me to get in close to these uh, paranoid goobers, they're not all paranoid goobers, but a lot of them are, um, you know, I have to reach out and touch them with a fast lens, and I have to be quick. And uh, a 35 millimeter ain't going to cut it. If i got to be close enough to get a good shot with a 35 millimeter, I'm too close to these goobers that are packing, you know, five or six guns, and half of them are loaded. Um, uh, I could have made some money today, too. I had three people stop me that had booths. One of them was a food booth. They had all these open pit grills, and I was taking pictures of the flames and them uh, squirting kerosene, and they wanted to offer me money, and I, I, I turned them down. I just didn't have time to dick around with that, but uh, I could have made some money today uh, from them, uh, but turned them down. Um, I took a lot of neat... This is the one place, too, where as fat as I am, I mean, compared to some of the people down there, I'm freaking anorexic. I mean, these people are <laughs> just huge, huge people. I mean, it, and they must, like, wake up and eat Cheerios and donuts and have candy bars for snacks and, you know, uh, eat uh, cream cake for dinner or something. It's like, damn, 
You know, I had I, I had a salad today. Anyway, my feet are killing me. I've been shooting for like <whistles> several, many several hours today. I got there too, by the way, at uh, 7.30 a.m. and it was 32 degrees outside. It was freezing. Every time I was chimping on my D750, I'd actually have to wipe the screen like <whistles> Wipe the LCD screen because of the condensation. I had to breathe out of the corner of my mouth because when I was chimping on the D750, I was uh, you know, having to <clears throat> wipe the condensation off my screen. Um, that's also, too, another important thing you're going to do if you're going to take your camera from your warm house temperature. And, of course, I had to drive 30 miles to get there. I had to, uh, before I opened up the door and arrived there, I opened up the windows on the car uh, slowly as I crept there mile after mile and acclimated my camera to that temperature because when you take your camera out from the hot to the cold you got condensation and humidity issues and it doesn't matter whether your camera is sealed or not you can foobar your camera and your lens uh, build up the humidity because cameras and lenses have a huge hole in the front whether the lens is on there or not they're only sealed no matter what the ceiling is they're only sealed against invasive weather not pervasive pervasive is like Perpetual attack or humidity, so you no camera is sealed against pervasive uh, uh, water and weather intrusion, only invasive. And uh, Nikon and nobody else will tell you that. Is it, our cameras are weather sealed. Yeah, yeah, they are, but no, they're not. They're sealed against invasive, not pervasive. Anyway, my feet are killing me, but I knew what I would be shooting today, and instead of having a 35mm street camera, I knew I'd be shooting these type of people you know, that uh, hate the press, they hate the media. I have to be fast, and I am damn fast, but this lens is super fast, and I can reach out and touch somebody from 20, 30 yards away, and, you know, dial it into 200 or whatever I need to, and get right in there. And uh, so that's why you always got to be pre-planning, because if I brought a street, street, street lens with me, if I shoot out in San Francisco, I'll get 35 millimeters Zeiss, or you know, 50 millimeters Zeiss or something like that, but you know, there, no, it's like I gotta have this. It's why you always gotta be thinking ahead. You always gotta be pre planning your shoots. The same thing is true of weddings, but it's also true of anything else, also. Obviously so. Okay? Bye. God, I am tired. <laughs> and sunburn.